Hey, I'm gonna wait a few seconds here before I start this video. Oh, I'm gonna kick my dog out of the house. I'll be right back. Come on, Sparky. Let's go. Get him. Come on. Out. Come on, baby. Go get him. <laughs> I had them out, but they snuck in, so hopefully he won't hear all that noise out there. Uh, I've been wanting to go on to the next chapter in my book uh, about uh, the supernatural transforming power of communion, but um, I have been so busy, it's so hard to get to it, and right now, uh, it's like, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that, and, and I'm in dirty clothing and, and all this stuff. So I just didn't get around to doing it. Now, this is one of, this is a good chapter. And I kind of procrastinated it because it's like not my favorite chapter. There's certain things I like to teach on in this book and I get really excited about it. And uh, I skipped the chapter before this. I'm going to just do that uh, on a video instead of live. And I skipped the first one because it was uh, too much technical information. I'll go back over it later. But uh, this is the old covenant process of communion, a shadow. And communion is a symbol of the covenant of our union with the president, with the presence of God. We exchange a blessing, uh, blessings and curses. In uh, the new covenant is a shadow of the old covenant. And in the old covenant, you would exchange things. They would uh, a lesser. Uh, community would make a covenant with a stronger in a stronger community that was stronger in something they were weak in for example and I'm probably going to get off into teaching and not go exactly what's over in the book because I'm not one of these good ones that like to read word for word I like to just share out of my own knowledge um, so uh, for example a, a group would be really good in harvesting wheat but not protecting their crops and another group of people would be really good as warriors and so they would make a covenant they would exchange. Uh, I will come and protect your um, your grain and your wheat and everything if you give us some of your grain. And then they would make a deal. And then there would be blessings and curses for those uh, when one group wouldn't. Okay, when they made this covenant, they would announce blessings and curses. If you break this covenant, I'm going to do this to you. If you break this covenant, I'm going to do this to you. So each side would have uh, curses that would be pronounced on the other one. And um, this also applies to covenants that, like in the Illuminati, uh, if you get high up in it, they have uh, the Illuminati and the Masons. They have curses to each other, like from, from if you break this covenant or break the secret of the things we're sharing with you, you will have stomach cancer to the fifth generation. And that is ways that one of the uh, things are passed down in the bloodline. So I'm going over, uh, I'm going to go over some really cool stuff that God has given me. I better write this down real quick. Because he tells me stuff that when I'm doing this and it's like, ooh, 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 I don't want to go off on a rabbit trail and then I forget what I'm saying. So I have to keep pen and pencil here and write it down. Um, so Passover was an annual celebration that the Jewish people did, and it was a reminder of the deliverance from slavery, which we are probably going to be delivered from as soon as Trump goes through what he's doing and draining the swamp. But I'm going to do another video on that, hopefully after this, if I have the energy and my dogs are quiet enough for long enough and so on. So Passover was a celebration that started when the Jews were delivered from being uh, um, in slavery for, I think it was 400 years. And they were told to kill, to take a lamb that was without spot and blemish and have it for so many days. And on that certain day, each family was to sacrifice their lamb. They were to eat the whole lamb, leave nothing by morning that was not eaten. And they were supposed to uh, take the blood of the lamb and smear it, uh, smear it on the do doorpost. And that sign there that is uh, the Jewish, in the Jewish writing, that is uh, a door, an entryway. Uh, and that is protection in Hebrew writing, in Jewish writing. Um, so anyway, so the blood was smeared on the doorpost, on the sides, the top, and both sides. And then they were to eat the whole lamb. 
and whatever they didn't eat by morning they were to burn in the fire okay and they were supposed to eat the lamb with bitter herbs and unleavened bread okay so what was said was the blood when the death angel saw the blood on the doorpost um, the death angel would pass over and judgment would be executed by the death angel on all those who did not have the blood over their doorposts. Now, I'm going to stop right here and tell you something that God told me that you're going to probably think is far out, crazy, weird. But here's a trick. The more you know about the enemy, you also can get revelation about God because everything that the enemy does is a copy of the real thing. Uh, a lot of things that the new age people do is a copy of the real deal, the real thing. Okay. So this is going to get totally weird and it's going to freak you out, but God showed me this and it got me excited. Wait till I get to the end of my definition and my end of my explanation before you shut off. Okay. Adrenochrome is a drug that the elite and the cabal and the Satanists use. And what it is, is they take children, the more innocent, the better, and they torment them to cause fear so that chemicals are released inside their bloodstream that causes a euphoria when the person drains the blood of the victim, caused fear in it, released chemicals into their blood, and then drank their blood. This is what the elite and the cabal and the Satanists do. It's called adrenochrome. And that's, it can be, it, it's a horrible, horrible thing. But what God showed me is, they, they do this and, and they, then they take it as a drug and it, and it, it just gives them the highest high. It's like the drug of the elite. And if you know anything about uh, child trafficking and human trafficking, it's the most financially profitable business in the world uh, is human trafficking because you can traffic them over and over and over and over again. So this is what God showed me. What I have in my book and what I'm teaching in the revelation that I believe that I got that I don't know of anyone. I didn't get it from anyone else teaching. God gave this directly to me is about the trees in the garden, the tree of life and the tree of death. And the cycle of death that we have come to accept as normal. Okay. What he showed me is that this adrenochrome is a copy of, in a way, a copy, copy and a mockery of what Jesus did. Jesus was is the most innocent blood. They take innocent blood. Okay. Jesus was the most innocent blood. He was he was tortured and tormented for us he was beaten he was stripped naked he was beaten he had a crown on and mocking him he bled his flesh the cat and nine tails had chunks of like glass and 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 um, sharp objects and it would whip and when it whipped it would dig into his skin and dig it out and it did it in his private parts it did it on sensitive parts under arms it did it on his face it ripped off his face and you know and if you look at the adrenochrome people what they do is they torment the person well jesus was tortured and tormented and and for us so that we would be healthy okay here's another thing that god pointed out to me how the elite the cabal and satanists are copying the original and it is horrible okay they drink the blood adrenochrome chrome blood to get them uh, to renew their youth because the the blood of the babies uh, produces cells in their body that makes them look younger so you can take all these people who are not godly people and look at how young they look um, that they're 70 and 80 years old and they're absolutely gorgeous and beautiful because it's not really them. It's it's the, the blood of adrenochrome, which is a, like a fountain of youth. Well, Jesus' blood is the most high blood, the most awesome high blood that there is. And he says in the scripture that he renews our youth. 
So part of what he showed me with this is everything that they are copying and they are doing is a sick, tormented, evil, mockery, copy, and imitation of what mm. Jesus did for us. He was tortured for us. He was beaten for us. His skin, his face, everything, it was ripped off. And, 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 and he gives, he said, eat my, drink my blood and eat my flesh. And this isn't even in this chapter. I'm going to have to write a whole new chapter to add in this book because of the things that God's still revealing to me. He said, drink my blood. If you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have life in you. Okay. That's what the elite is doing. They're drinking and eating the flesh and the blood of tortured, sacrificed children to get the adrenochrome and chrome and is making them younger is making them look younger, even though they're sick, they're evil, and so on. Um, Jesus' blood is the most high blood. Okay, so his blood, is he, as he promised, is making us more, giving us youthful. He says, I will renew your youth. And when you look up in the scripture, he says, drink my blood and eat my flesh, and those who do will have life in them. If you look up the word life, and I do have this in my book, that life means to be abundant, exuberant, alive, um, functioning like on the highest level. And so his body and his blood, when we take communion, is giving us life, exhilarating and uh, vigorating and alive and active. It's, it's, it's not, it, it changes the aging process. It, it stops the, the, um, the death cycle. Okay. So I just wanted to share that little bit with you about what God shared with me about that horrible stuff going on and how it is it is horrible and hideous um, and and what Jesus and how you can look at it and say look what Jesus did for me he, he has the most high blood and body so the Passover was a shadow of the old covenant and, and Jesus is now the sacrificial lamb not just for the Jews but for anybody who chooses to accept Jesus paying uh, uh changing them making them born from a above as a child of god and now this is some really interesting stuff here god showed me about jesus um and and well i probably read it somewhere else too but he gets into some really interesting stuff here jesus as the bread okay jesus is the lamb the body and the the bread the body and the bread the blood and the bread and body um he says in matthew 15 25 he says I was not sent except to the lost sheep of Israel that uh, and then she came and worshiped him and said, Lord, help me. And he answered and he said, it is not good to take away the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs yet. And then, in other words, this lady who was not in the Jewish covenant was being called a dog because she was not in the covenant. She was not included in the blessings of the Jews. But she said, even the little dogs go under the master's table and get the crumbs. And then Jesus said, you know, because of our faith that she would be healed. So what I'm showing you right here is that the bread, the blood, blood and the body, which we do by drinking a liquid and the bread, bread is for the healing, the physical manifest healing and youthfulness of us because we take the body and the blood because it gives us life. Okay. So the bread is for our physical healing that means we do not have to go through the cycle of you break your arm well the the uh worldly healing is it takes takes six six year six weeks to heal that is the death cycle on the earth we don't have to accept that let me give you an example um I, my husband got a cold a really nasty cold which could have been the I don't know what could have been coronavirus. I don't know. Months ago, he's gotten a bad cold, coughing, hacking up. It's probably what they call the crud, uh, hacking up, blowing his nose and everything. And I refuse to get it. I take took communion over. I take vitamins and minerals. Um, according to the knowledge of the world, I take the vitamins and minerals and try to exercise and eat right, stay away from sugar, flour and all that stuff. Well, um, I've learned about communion and the power of communion. So over the years, I would wake up in the morning and I would have a sore throat. So I would fight it with certain uh, scriptural and spirit in a spiritual way. And about an hour or two or three or four, I, I wouldn't have it anymore. 
and then it would come back and I'd have it for a day or two and it would come back and I have it for a day or two. Now, since I understand communion, what has been happening is I would get uh, the sniffles and my nose would start running. I mean, dripping, running, like just like that for no, re no reason, dripping and running and say, okay, wait, 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 wait. I realize that I have been just letting it drip instead of taking authority over it. So I say, hey, wait a minute. I am a child from above. I'm holy, blameless, and above reproach. There is no legal right to put any kind of sickness or disease on me. I am born from above. I have a whole new bloodline. I'm a whole, all things become new, including my body. And I'm going to make my, my body is beginning to manifest the newness of who I am in Christ. Because he said, all things become new. He didn't say, oh, not your body. Look, it looks the same. Your body isn't new. It is new. And, 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 but like everything else in Christianity, you have to believe for it. You have to stand for it. And the devil's not just going to let you have it like that. He's going to fight it. So what happens is I would get this runny nose and I said, wait a minute, I'm going to take communion. I'm going to take the body and the blood of Jesus, which is vitamins and minerals and nutrition from heaven. I just, you know, it's just, I just have a glass, a little glass of water and a, a, usually a nut or a seed or a tiny piece of bread uh, because I like to, I usually like to fast till one o'clock because I want to keep weight off of me and uh, want to be healthy. So I just kind of like something little. And a seed reminds me of that Jesus is the word, the seed, and that when you take the seed in you, it produces fruit. So I would take communion and I'd say, hey, you know, I know who I am. I am, I am a child of God. The blood of Jesus made me innocent, holy, and above reproach. You cannot legally put any sickness and disease on me. I am a born-again creature. I am born from God, a child of God. It is illegal for sickness and disease to come on me. So you go. I'm not accepting you in Jesus' name. I take authority over you. I forbid you to operate on me. And there's one other thing I say. Um, uh, oh, I bring, and, and this book talks about it, and this is really, really important. I bring my conscience under the blood of Jesus because your conscience is what makes your body sick. You have a guilty conscience or your conscience is weak in a certain area. Um, the wages of sin is death. And even though it might be a sin of just a simple thought, or not taking a thought captive, or whatever. The devil is a legalist. He's going to try to pin it against you. So uh, I say, I put my blood, uh, my conscience under the blood of Jesus. And then in a minute time, sometimes in 10 minute time or hour time, whatever it is, it's gone. Okay, then maybe in about five hours, it'll try to come back. And I'll just repeat it and do the same thing. And since I've been written this book about communion, and see here, there's, I'm telling you so much more than is in this chapter. <laughs> Um, since there's, since I've written that book about communion, the battles that I fight, physical fight of physical runny nose, sickness, cough, sore throat, a sneeze or, or whatever is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And at first I would lose the revelation and then I would panic. Oh no, what was that revelation I got? What was that revelation? And then I would begin to write it down and then I would begin to take communion with the information from my book that I've written that is supernatural revelation to me and it began to physically change my body and now I don't know if you can tell but I've been doing this communion and I've been doing a few other things um, balancing my pH by pH in my body so sickness can't get in and I feel as though I'm looking younger and younger <laughs> of course that's just my opinion but I feel like I am okay now I need to grow some teeth I'm telling God I need some teeth okay so anyway, so that's what I want to share with you about that part. Now let's get back there. Jesus' body and the, the bread is a representative of his body. Um, the bread was for physical healing for our body. Okay, And he wants everyone healed, even people outside the covenant. That's why you can go up to people who are not saved. And you can lay hands on them and, on them and, and pray for them and they can be healed. Because they're not in the covenant and she wasn't in the covenant. But yet she believed for healing and he released healing to her. So we have that. And um, let's see, the blood does, the blood of, okay, in the old covenant, and I'm just like not really going everywhere I want to go here. Um, the blood of the old covenant, it covered up, it covered up sin for, um, it covered up your sin for sin done innocently. No, you, you sinned, you touched the dead body up, oh, now you have to stay out of the uh, camp for seven days, you were unclean and so on, okay. They could be redeemed, but sin that you did on purpose um, couldn't be redeemed. And your conscience would 
make you sick or do whatever. Uh, but the blood of Jesus does more than that. The, the blood of Jesus not just uh, covers sin, it takes it away and makes you a new creation. And that's the biggest thing I don't think Christians got today. I think that they're thinking, okay, the blood of Jesus takes away my sin. Now I'm on the way to heaven. That's it. That's not it. That's not it. It's so exciting. It's so much more than that. The blood of, of the sacrifice in the Jewish um, days in the Old Covenant covered blood. Cover, I mean, covered your sin. But the blood of Jesus takes away your sin nature and makes you a new creation never before existed on the earth a son of god okay and we are according to the bible called god of earth we are children of god a monkey has baby monkeys we are god's kids okay and god created us to relate to him to have a fellowship and relationship with him jesus came as the son to re to um, reveal the father because God wanted a family families are not like this a slave and a master families talk to each other they interact with each other they experience each other they have fun together they play together they do stuff together so that is what the blood of Jesus did for us it brought us into life and life cycles oh, I, I'm gonna get, I get so sidetracked here I get so excited sorry um okay um uh let me see here um okay in the old covenant okay if you look at the old it reveals the new it is so exciting okay and i love going back to genesis and look at the creation because it's one of my favorite places to go to realize what i have now okay if you look at the old covenant when they came out of egypt not one was feeble okay today i went for a walk i have bought some new boots i absolutely love 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 boots I love boots. I could wear them seven days a week, 24 hours a day, no matter what season. Cowboy boots. I love cowboy clothing. I am, I love cowboy clothing. Um, anyway, I went for a walk today in my new cowboy boots. I came home and the bottom of my feet were really tender. And immediately the Holy Spirit reminded me in the old covenant, it says that their, that they, their shoes did not wear out and there was no one feeble. He says, your feet should not hurt from you walking in those boots. That is not who you are. I said, that's right, feet, you have no right to hurt. No blisters on the bottom of my feet. Instantly gone. So, I just want to reveal to you some of the ways that, and I'm getting hot in here, I should open the window, some of the ways that you can use covenant. Okay, um, and I wanted to tell you something else a lot of Christians get wrong. They think that God cursed the earth because of what Adam and Eve did. He didn't. The curse was the result of what they ate. It was death. God said, if you eat from this tree, you will die. Death was a curse. I'm going to open this window. Hang on a second. It's too hot in here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Ugh, now you can hear the dogs. Um, okay, uh, so bread is associated. Oh, here's another exciting thing. Bread is nourishment. It's substance. Did you say, who, did you ever think of this? Who's bringing home the bread? Finances. Communion even touches your finances. Mm. That's good. That's vinegar, essential oil, and vanilla steva. Excellent water. Okay, so bread in many countries is uh, another... Sparky, hey, Sparky, quiet. Shh. Uh, is another word for um, finances. So to me, communion is multivitamin, minerals, energy from heaven, life from heaven, uh, resources, wisdom, knowledge, discernment. It's healing my physical body. It's making me, um, renewing my youth, getting rid of menopause symptoms, hot flashes, all that trash. Um, okay, bread, in, in the word says in John 1, 4, in him was life. He is the seed of heaven growing in me. And remember, as far as renewed youth goes, he says that we are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Okay? It also says that we are um, one spirit with him and we have the mind of Christ. Okay, So we are the flesh that Jesus is walking in today on the earth. 
So right now, in this time when this fear is going around, we need to be powerful. We need to be walking in that power. We need to be alive. Okay, so the seed is growing in you. The bread, the bread and the body, the blood and the body of Jesus has the genetic DNA of heaven in it. Oh, that is so exciting. If you could just get a hold of that. Um, the DNA of God is in the body and the blood of Jesus that we eat in communion. I talk to it. I say, I, this is basically how I do communion. I take the body and I say, thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is your body that was broken for me. I accept healing. I accept. I talk to the DNA and I say, the blood of Jesus go to my cells, go to my very center of my being, create my T cells and my immune system to be strong. And I just go through a whole list of all kinds of things. And I say, I receive your wisdom, knowledge and discernment. Um, the body and the blood of Jesus goes into my mind. It, 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 it uh, brings back any altars, any fragmentations of my spirit, my soul, brings them back to me. And if you don't understand that, that's um, healing, uh, supernatural healing. Um, it heals my body. It renews my youth. It gives me supernatural wisdom, knowledge, discernment. And I just go over it all. I mean, I, I have, it's all, it's all ours. Um, so if you look at the Strong's Concordance and the word bread, when they're talking about um, the body and the bread of, of Jesus, it's a love feast. Strong's Concordance G740 bread says, uh, the bread used as a love feast and at the table, at the food. Okay, and I, I could go over that. I don't want to jump into that because I'm going to get excited and I'll, it's in another chapter. So, um, and when it talks about giving us life that his body and bread ha gives us life, <clears throat> body and blood it's it's uh zoe z-o-e and it's g two 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 four twos it's physical abs okay this is the word i want to tell you all ago <clears throat> absolute fullness of life life real and genuine a life active and vigorous okay Ooh. when it says that if you eat my body and drink my blood there is life in it there's a, oh, that's what that life means absolute fullness of life now if you owe bills is that fullness of life if you're getting shut off if you're losing your job is that fullness of life okay life active and vigorous if you are sick home in bed is that is that life active and and fullness if you are dying of a sickness or disease is that life active and vigorous if you're 80 years old and you can't move is that active and vigorous no take communion get a hold of my book it is free until the coronavirus uh, stuff is done until we are out of um, confinement and everybody can go out. I'm going out anyway because, you know, I live in Tulsa area and we pretty much have freedom. Just can't have hockey or swimming at the Y, which are my two favorite things to do physically. Um, but everything else we are doing like normal here. So I feel sorry for those of you who are not. <clears throat> get out and get some sunshine. It really, really, really makes a difference. God showed me that a long time ago. Nature was created to create balance in our bodies and peace and harmony to, like a garden. Okay, so uh, Strong's, uh, let's see, um, to reanimate, to restore to life, to give increase of life, thus physical life, a seed quickening into life, germinating, springing, and growing up. Cool, huh? Okay, so the blood, the blood is for judgment, okay? For I will pass through and will strike. I will execute judgment. Exodus 12, 12. So the blood executes judgment in the sense of the blood and the body of Jesus uh, protects you from the death cycle. But uh, the word of God says, my people die for lack of knowledge. So if you don't know what the body and the blood does for you, you won't have it. Just like if I put a million dollars in your bank account and never tell you, you won't have something that belongs to you. You have to take what belongs to you, okay? Uh, you have to take, the devil's going to try to keep it from you. Uh, so so the blood is an execution, and it shows that Jesus, that the wages of sin is death. Jesus' death already paid for my sin. So when I, when I accept that, I'm a born again person. I become born from above and become God's child because I am born again from above, from the seed of Jesus. 
Uh, most Christians think they're born again, but it's not born again. It's born from above. You are already born on this earth, but now you are spiritually born, made alive. Everything about you has changed. You are born from above. God is your daddy, and I call him daddy, and he's a lot of fun, and he jokes with me. Um, okay, this is really, really, really cool. The steps of the blood. Now, I cheat. I will admit I got this from someone else. Uh, but I thought it was it was really good. Oh, and I see a mistake in my book. Ugh. Okay, so the steps of the blood. First, the blood was put on the doorpost. Okay, the blood sacrifice was put on the doorpost. Next, the priests were told to apply the blood to the people. Uh, and on the priests, it would be their thumb, their big toe, and then the blood was uh, is in us. Through communion isn't that cool so the steps of the blood are first it was put in the doorpost then it was put on the people then it was put in the people so we everyone in the world has an opportunity to be born from above and to have the blood of Jesus a brand new bloodline no curses brought down from the bloodline no curses from their community witch doctor or whatever uh, from what their father did or didn't do no sickness and diseases passed down nothing from generation to generation you have a brand new bloodline a brand new body take it receive it it's yours now this is something else that i had to do some research on which i thought was awesome a lot of stuff listen to this there's different parts to the blood and they do different stuff this is so cool god it reveals himself through nature listen to this white blood cells defend against diseases red blood cells deliver nutrients and remove waste and platelets heal injuries and cuts isn't that so awesome i love that that's what happens when you take the body and the blood of jesus that has life in it he's defending you against disease his body and the blood is de delivering nutrients and removing waste toxics from your body everything about big pharma Everything about inoculations that we were forced to take when we were younger. Everything about um, the uh, frequencies in the air and the, uh, the stuff they put on us with the airplanes. Chemtrails, <clears throat> frequencies. It's all there to kill us. And it's copies of the good stuff of what is available to us that we are not using and understanding yet. But it takes away... It removes waste, toxics, metal toxics, uh, parasites, amoebos, or how do you say it? So the blood works. It's pretty awesome. Um, let's see. Communion means we drink his blood, meaning that he's dead. We drink his blood because he's dead, meaning there was a death for our guilt. There was a punishment for our guilt. Okay. Whenever the devil looks at us, he sees the blood in us. And by taking communion, we are um, enforcing a law that says that we are new creatures. We are holy, blameless, and above reproach. There is no legal right to put any sickness, disease, or injury on us because of the body and the blood of Jesus. So we're proclaiming his death proclaiming legally the devil has no right okay so the works of the blood the blood has a voice there's two scriptures i believe yeah Hebrew, uh, genesis 4 10 hebrews 10 19 and first john 1 17 that talks about the blood of jesus how it has a voice and how it cleanses us cleanses us the blood is alive deuteronomy 9 14 deuteronomy 12 23 his blood gives us life and the life is in the blood genesis 9 14 leviticus leviticus 17 11. blood is a sign you always heard people say i plead the blood of jesus well they some most of them just say that because they heard it they don't got the revelation of the power of the blood the power of the blood pleading the blood it means that jesus took everything you ever did wrong past present and future wiped it out made it no longer legal to punish you for those crimes 
<clears throat> no longer allowed to put sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear on you because Jesus paid the price. The wages of sin is death. His death became your death. You, he died as you. Paid your price. So the blood, when we take communion, is saying to the spirit realm, I'm untouchable. I am a new creation. I am the flesh and the blood that Christ walks in and lives on on the earth today. You cannot legally touch me. He died for me. His blood is right here. You know, oops, right here. His blood is right here. Um, and that's what you're declaring law. And somewhere in my book, I go over that part, how what the Greek, uh, Greek word or whatever, language, Hebrew Greek word, what that really means in the strongest accordance. Okay, his blood also seals a covenant. Okay, Exodus 24, 8. Now, you don't have to write these down because I'm giving this book away free as a PDF download file on my website, robinbremer.net. So this is uh, actually... What I'm going over today is actually in chapter 5, so you can get that. <clears throat> um, what I went over in the beginning isn't in anywhere in the book because I just kind of get sidetracked and God talks to me while I'm doing this. Um, his blood is a sign of peace, 2 Corinthians 16, 13, and gives us peace. 1 Corinthians 20, if you need peace, if you're in fearful, take communion. But don't just take communion, get a revelation about it. It is so powerful, I love it. I love the blood. I love what I'm continuously learning about the blood and the body of Jesus. The blood destroys the power of death. Sickness, disease, accidents, death in any form. Hebrews 2.14. It shows that there was a death to pay the price and that death was the perfect lamb. Okay. It purges our conscience. This is one of my favorite chapters that I'm going to be talking about that has changed my life. How the blood purges our conscience. So that we have boldness to be friends with God, to be partners with God, to be joint heirs with Jesus, co-workers, okay? Uh, and, and what the blood does to your conscience, that's a whole other chapter. That's like my favorite, one of my favorite chapters. I have like three favorite chapters in this book. Um, and that's Hebrews 9.14. The blood washes away sin, Revelation 1.5. Uh, um, and it makes us innocent and not punishable by the old law. Revelation 7 14 now remember this is a new covenant. We are not Jews. We are not under the old covenant We are not under the law. We are not under the Ten Commandments. We are The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. We are led by our conscience Okay, so this one of these other chapters is going to talk about the blood of Jesus and our conscience And that's really life-changing stuff um, His blood makes us an overcomer Revelation 12 11. It makes us rulers of the earth again and one thing <clears throat> I've been living, I've been listening to um, the war that's going on right now, draining the swamp, the undercover war, which is really about light versus darkness. And them going into the FEMA tunnels and uh, fighting the uh, Illuminati and the Cabal and what they're doing under there. And for the first two days, I mean, I was like a wreck. It just so messed up my head stuff that is so much worse than I ever ever even thought of and so what was my point oh okay I don't know what my point was anyway I was messed up and I had to come back to the blood and what the blood of Jesus did and that is the most high blood and I don't know what my point is and hopefully I'll remember it and share it with you Ugh, I, hate, I should have wrote down <laughs> um, okay so the blood allows us to have his divine nature for second Peter 1 4 his divine nature is not only love and goodness, okay? A lot of people think, oh, I have his, you know, his nature. I, I have to be good and I have to walk in love. But that's not just what it's talking about. We have his divine nature to create the world around us, to change things by speaking. Uh, we have the power in us. We are the sons of God. We are in him, in us, in us. And it says the blood causes us to be in him. And as he is, so are we now in this world. That's a powerful statement. Uh, the blood declares our righteousness, Romans 3, 25. It says we are right with God, no longer under judgment or condemnation or the death cycle. It says that we have power. It has the power to justify us. It is legal. The blood of Jesus 
legally cleanses us from all past, present, and future sins and brings us into God's grace, mercy, family, and love. If you go back to Genesis, and this is what God showed me last night. It's not in the book either. God showed me last night. He took me back to Genesis where it says they were naked and they were not ashamed. And then they ate the fruit. And the first thing that their eyes were open, they realized that they were naked and they were ashamed. They went and hid themselves. So what it what God showed me was the first thing that changed when they sinned was their conscience. And that's why that chapter on the conscience is so important. They became conscious, conscious that they were naked and that consciousness made them realize they were ashamed. Okay, what is all the laws and the rules and legalistic uh, devil trying to do? He is trying to make you ashamed. And so grace is so, so important. God is not about knocking heads and, and, and telling you, you bad girl, you did this. He's like, oh, that was a mistake. You shouldn't have done that. Maybe next time, you know, do it this way. But I love you. You know, God is not about shaming and condemning us god is about loving us the goodness of god leads to repentance so keep that in mind so anyway that was chapter five um chapter six is feast on him and what i am planning and hoping to do is i'm going to turn this into an audiobook my husband was going to do it but he's so busy doing voiceovers and that's more profitable to him so i'll have somebody else do this uh as an audio book i will also be turning it i'm going to be adding uh, uh it'll say um what is the word? Uh, when you add an addition to uh, up, up, a revised an addition, I will probably add another chapter to this uh, someday. It, I will also turn it into a Bible study. I'll be doing videos and audios, MP3s of it, turning it into a course because it is so powerful and so many Christians take communion as a ritual. And so many Christians don't take communion because their pastor says, oh, if you sin, don't take communion. Okay, there's a whole chapter on the biggest lie told about communion, and it is called, um, let me see, what is it called? Uh, it is called, uh, I should go to the index. One of the chapters, my favorite chapters is your conscience and, your blood, and the blood. Uh, okay, the biggest lie, the big lie, communion in an unworthy manner. So a lot of Christians are taught not to take communion because they might have sinned last night. They forgot to repent of one of their sins and they're going to get sick and die. Totally wrong. Totally opposite. Lie, lie, lie. And one, my chapter in my book goes over that. So take communion. It is powerful. Okay. So folks, here is my commercial. First of all, if you like this, if it's a blessing to you, please share it with your social media site. Share the fact that it is free to download until after coronavirus is gone because I want to build people up. I want them to take communion. I want them, while they're bored, sitting at home, I want them to read this book. I want them to get hungry. I want them to get angry. I want them to do research. I want them to find out truth. And so this book is free until after the lockdown is lifted. And then it'll go, you know, for sale. It is in print. It is available in print and in Kindle right now. And my crucial is if you are a Christian author, now is a great time to get your book out. I published your book <coughs> for $399 as a Kindle book. <coughs> when I get excited and talk too loud, I have a really strong voice. So I make myself go, <laughs> you know, and it kind of makes me cough then. So I always need a microphone when I'm on stage because if I try to shout, it like it makes me cough. So anyway, um, $399 to publish your book. My niche is supernatural Christian books, but I will publish any book for anyone that is family friendly, is not occultic, and is not um, goes against Christian values. Um, at this time, I do not publish picture books. They are more technical than I really want to get involved in. I have done a few, but I prefer not to. And if you do want to publish one, it's a hundred dollars more. And I have to accept it. I have to make sure I want to do that because they are a lot more time consuming and harder than I want to be involved in. I also promote books. I have, a, uh, I have tools. I have training. I have experience. I can get almost any book up to number one with all the tools that I have um, into the best selling category as a free book. 
Uh, so I have that available. I also can make your Kindle uh, description pop and look like it's being promoted by Amazon with uh, bullets and um, bold and italics and all that stuff that doesn't show for regular books. Excuse me. So I have a, a lot of services. I also do some counseling um, for somebody uh, who wants to know what way to go with their book. And that's $25 for a half an hour. It includes um, some links and stuff that I give you after I interview you and help you. So I do do that stuff. Also, if you want to get involved in strengthening your immune system, and I can't legally say certain words yet because the FDA does not allow anybody to claim any product that they sell heals them or can heal them or has healed them if it's not FDA approved, meaning if they can't patent it and make money off of it. So with that being said, if you would like to order, if you would like to buy wholesale essential oils, essential oils infused products, uh, safe products that are not toxic for your baby, for your pets, for sports, vitamins and minerals and oils, you can order them from me You or you can just, I'll give you my number and you can enroll and get them yourself. It is absolutely awesome. I love, love, love the products I order about a hundred to two hundred dollars worth of products every single month they are amazing um so you can you get involved in that if you want to support my ministry and you don't want to just donate cash you can uh have me order frankincense which is phenomenal amazing lavender which is which is my biggest piece thing uh grapefruit which is what i lose what i use to drink lots of water and keep the weight off so anyway, so that was my advertisement and God told me to always pray. Um, also in the process of time, I'm working on my ventriloquism, getting back into it, looking forward to that. Cannot wait. I got brand new puppets that can get hot and heated up in the car. So I will be available in the Tulsa area. And with my bus, I will eventually be traveling and doing shows all over the country. So with that being said, hi, Bob, long time no see. Um, hi, everybody. And let me pray for y'all real quick. Father, I just pray for uh, people's eyes to be open to the body and the blood of Jesus and the power and what it really can do for them, body, spirit, and soul, relationships, finances, and everything else. I speak peace. I pray that their eyes would be open to what's going on in the world today and what the truth is and uh, to dig past the media and to find answers and solution and that they would have peace and health. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to probably do another video in a few minutes on Q and on the Illuminati and the Cabal and what's happening now and show you how to do your own research. So anyway, so do me a favor. If you like what I've shared with you, share it with your social media sites, share it with your friends. It gets shared around. It gets thousands of views. So I will try to read all your comments. But if you want me to re read a comment or have a something that you want to tell me, you'll have to put my name in there uh, and then I will be able to respond um, um, so anyway so share it thank you guys and like I said if you want to uh, support my ministry in any way you can buy my books also you can download my stuff free on my website robinbremer.net download this book free on my website along with uh, how to read cue drops and where to go to do some research and uh, some other books that I'm giving away free plus right now I either have DNA free or another book free right now I'm trying to have one book free as a kindle book every day until um the coronavirus lockdown is over and have i have four at least four books and two other informative things on my website uh how to research q and trump draining the swamp and how to pray about the war going on right now underground um so okay go to my website i'll put it up after this so share it and i will talk to you all later all right Thank <laughs> you.